in our comments section, one of our subscribers uh, said this. It said that painting loose and painterly is more realistic than painting tight. Would you please advise if this is true and why? And how we can paint in a painterly style. I have a few ideas about that. Well, first of all, let's let's talk about this business of always painting loose and painterly, or loose and painterly as being more realistic than painting tight. What about Andrew Wyeth? Andrew Wyeth's painting seems very tight, and yet there's no question he does beautifully realistic work. It's highly expressive, and so many people aspire to paint like Andrew Wyeth. So that kind of discounts that, does it? Well, no, we can go further than that. What about Salvador Dali? You don't find loose and painterly in Salvador Dali. Well, you might know the painter Michael Parks. Same thing. You don't find that loose and painterly, but what you find are exciting paintings in all these. And I could go on and on and on, but I don't want to spend the entire quick dip time. Uh, but just those are just examples. Know that business of your painting must be loose and painterly uh, that's really a myth. Now, painting with confidence is not a myth. So a lot of times the, uh, some people think that the, the be, being able to paint loose and painterly is a sign of being confident. Well, not necessarily, but let's say it wouldn't hurt for you to be able to paint with confidence, but you could still keep your painting more defined and less tight. So let me show you an idea. Well, first of all, let's look at some things that you can do. I think what this person is really asking is how to paint more painterly or how to paint with more confidence or with more life in the painting. Now, we see that in Sargent an awful lot where in the, in the actual faces of his portraits, you see them very tightly done. But in the dress, in, in the fabric, and in the surroundings, you'll see brush strokes, just quick brush strokes. So I think this is the kind of thing that people are talking about. It's having life in the painting, ways to have life. So here, here are some things I have learned over these several decades of teaching, learned that help students, if they can practice them, to actually paint with confidence, which is exactly what we're talking about here. One, paint with your arm and shoulder action, not with wrist and finger action. Now the difference, when you, if you're this kind of painter, if you're the kind of painter that squeezes way up on your brush and you're using finger strokes, this is not going to be loose and painter. That's going to continue to be tight. But if you can develop, uh, develop a process of allowing the strokes to be made with the movement of your shoulder, shoulder, uh, your entire arm, your shoulder and your elbow, some wrist movement like this, then you will find that their painting will be much looser and much more confident looking. Holding the brush. Uh, again, if you hold the brush right up next to the bristles, uh, that doesn't give very much room to, to work in. The further down the handle you can hold the brush, the more control you're going to have in it and the more expressive your work can be in the long run. So move your hand down the handle as long as, as far as it will go in order to um, uh, in order to work. And if you could go all the way down the handle and still have control of that brush, you'd be surprised at how much uh, painterly quality your painting can have. Load the brush with lots of paint. There's another place where people's work tightens up because they don't put enough paint on their brush. Don't be stingy. Lots of paint on the brush. And then choose a brush size as large as possible to get the job done. Um, people will start out a lot of times with these tiny, tiny little brushes and they'll be stroking the dickens out of a painting and it's going to be tight and it's, 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 it's going to feel a little bit on the amateur side. Now there's a little exercise that I love that I found that really, really helps people to get into this habit of doing loose and painterly or paint, loosening up their painting, um, the painting habits or getting their muscles and their and their process of painting loosened up. And, and so it's, it's a little exercise I call 10 quick strokes. So take something simple. In this case, I've taken just a coffee mug, as you see here. Go ahead and set up a drawing of whatever you're doing in a space no larger than five by seven. 
I've used a 5 by 7 space. And if you use it too small, it doesn't work. So I find that 5 by 7 or uh, maybe 6 by 7 or 5 by 5, nothing even smaller than 5 by 5 though, in order for this process to work, to do for you what you want it to do. Um, mix your colors that you'll need. You can, they don't have to be exact because this is an exercise. So mix colors that you'll need and mix them in a large amount. Uh, and then the idea is you're going to do a complete study of this subject and its background in 10 strokes or less. And we define a stroke by this from the time the brush hits the canvas until the time the brush lifts up from the canvas. So 10 strokes, that's a lot of space to cover in 10 strokes. Now there's a good place where it's a good idea to start with the largest brush that you have that will get the job done. So I will start with a relatively large brush in order to get started and show you what I mean by this exercise. Alright, so I'm seeing that here in the background, I'm seeing the background is relatively non-definable. Uh, the, the space behind I'm seeing that it is an and a lighter value and it's somewhat um, so, somewhat diffused, the shapes are somewhat diffused and so what I want to do there is I'm just going to load my brush, I'll just pick up a lot of white here I'm going to load my brush with a warm color and this is going to be the first stroke now I want it to be, I'm going to, because I know that I can put color a little bit darker on one side than on the other I'm just going to do that and get as much paint as I can on that brush and then here I go with my first stroke. Now remember, a stroke is from the time you put the brush down until you pick it up. So this can be a stroke. I'm just going to work my way around. I haven't picked the brush up yet. You see I'm still moving around. Not picked up the brush yet. I'm still moving around. Not picked up the brush yet. So you see this really can count as a stroke because I haven't picked up the brush yet. I'm still moving around and I still have paint in the brush so I can keep moving around. And you see how this can work and do it as fast as you can without messing around. And once I pick, I have to pick up the brush at one point or another because it'll skip shapes if I go into from one shape to the other or if I run out of paint. Now you don't have to go beyond that. That's, that's, do, that's the first stroke. Now let's go in. Let me keep count of the strokes. One way, you, one way you can keep count of the strokes is simply to make a mark. Now that is the first one. So I'll just make a mark here. That was my first stroke. Now the second stroke. I want to continue that background with a second stroke. And so then um, what will I do? Alright so I'll just come over here and I will and there the, paint, the brush is still touching the surface and I'm just going to drag it right across here like that so I can keep that as one stroke and pull it down into that kind of shadow area there and I'm just going to drag it back in here and take care of this negative area in there and there I have two strokes quickly if you hesitate with this and if you fiddle with it and fuss with it it's not going to do you any good remember this is a calisthenic in order to help you to develop better, better habits of painting and actually have more expressive and freer painting. Alright, so there's the second stroke. I got eight to go, a long way, uh, not far to go, and I got quite a few strokes left to do this stuff. By the way, it can be ten or less or fewer strokes. So I'm going to go ahead with the background and I'm going to go into a, uh, a lighter color where that uh, light is hitting that table. Let's just pull more white over here and get that lighter. And uh, I don't have to have it. I don't have to measure all this stuff exactly. So here we go. Uh, lighter color. Here's my third stroke. So I'm going to go right in here. I'll go right into there. I'll just pull it right down in here. Alright, so I've got lots of paint on this brush. And I've got that stroke. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cross right over here. I'm going to work and get this area right in here and here. Oh, I could have crossed right there. That would have been a good place to cross because they are actually the same area, aren't they? So I cross right in here. I can work that space right here behind that. And there is my third stroke. So I mark myself here another stroke. Alright, so I have three, made three strokes. I have a complete background and I have seven strokes to go. How about how cool is that? Alright, so I'm going to rinse this brush. Am I going to stick with this brush? This brush was a a large, a brush large enough to give me lots of coverage in that space to be able to load lots of paint and enable me to move uh, through that space in three strokes. Moving just a little bit smaller brush because I want a little bit more control than that. So uh, so what I need here now, I'm going to work the shadow areas first. 
So what I need to do, I'm going to need to, uh, I always like to dampen the brush before I start. And this is the brush I'm going to be using. So you see that brush fits into that space pretty good. Uh, Alright, so I'm seeing that. So I'm going to go ahead and going to load that brush with lots and lots and lots of, of dark paint. Let me put just a little bit of shadow, of shadow paint. All right, so I've got shadow. This side of the cup's in shadow. That side of the handle's in shadow. The shadow comes all the way around here. Let's see how I can do that. So I'll just work that in shadow. I'm gonna work it back and forth like this. I've still got the brush on. Still got the brush on the canvas. I'll just kind of say, just kind of move, move that around like that. Move it around again like that, like that. I picked up a little bit of that light, so I won't worry too much about that come back into this and see how far as that shadow goes it goes all the way over here like that go all the way into that like that because I see a little bit more shadow coming right over into here you see I had enough paint on the brush just keep pulling it down like that I have enough paint on that brush that I was able to get actually an entire almost an entire shadow area in there so let's give that another stroke I only made four strokes I've always got the brush I always got the uh, mug painted um, so now I'm going to go into a lighter color, pick up enough paint so I can move throughout, go into a lighter color, and let's go, let's see, it doesn't need to be that light, because it's a, a very, very, it's a, it's a very low light we have here. Well, so let's go into here, and we will do it again. All right, I'm shaping the, I'm shaping the cup, coming down with the brush, shaping, and shaping with the brush, and working those strokes into that lighter area just like that now I'm going to blend it into the shadow area just like that and actually that's all I need to do all right now I have used another I've used five strokes now I have five strokes left to finish up this study you see if you if you use the brush that's wide enough if you load it with paint enough paint uh, uh, if you're using this fast uh, or this uh, arm shoulder uh, movement that I'm using here you can get an awful lot done in a small space so what I'm going to do right now I'm going to take one of my strokes to kind of darken and, and, and define more uh, define the shadow a little bit better so I'm going to say use this and there's one stroke so I'm going to do just another little thing like that let's say I want to shape this a little bit more here two more strokes. Let's, let's write those down here. One, two. Okay. Alright, now let's see. Another stroke. Three. Here. Let's see, and I'll just come like, there we go, like that. There's three strokes. I have two strokes left to finish defining this cup. How will I use them? Alright, I'm going to use one of them right down here to define that occlusion shadow. Right here. Just like that. There's one. Right there. And I'll use the other one up here to define just the inside of the cup. So I'll put that one. One. And I have one more. You see, if you if you if you uh if you do this exercise with abundance of paint and the brush is large enough. You can have two strokes left over towards the end to finish up, or maybe four strokes left over, or maybe five strokes left over towards the end to shape it the way you want to shape it. So here I'll, I have, I can use that last stroke to shape the inside of the cup. So I'll just do that, like that, and I can move and move and move like that. And there's my study of this mug done in 10 quick strokes or less. So if you found this quick tip helpful, if you have something that you're struggling with or something that you'd like for me to explore with you, uh, just come right down here and leave a comment and we'll put your, your suggestion on our schedule. And don't forget, we have many, many, many instructional videos on our site, dianemice.com. Even if you just, if you, if you don't think you're interested, just go over there and take a look at the titles. Just read the titles and see if they speak to you. Or maybe you might find something there that you'd like to in get, investigate a little further. And there's your quick tip.